He also says that we can see the image of God not only in the act of exercise things, like when you're really, say, thinking about God, the highest object, but just in looking at the intellect, which can do those things, because it's the source of that actual activity. Furthermore, Thomas argues that the principles and powers of human nature, particularly the intellect, have not been, and I'm quoting him now, have been neither destroyed nor lessened through sin. You know, it's often claimed in many Christian traditions, you know, that, or, that original sin greatly re reduces and destroys even our powers. You know, we, we come to pray, and Thomas doesn't, Thomas has a kind of happy view of original sin. It's, it's serious, but it's not uh, so destructive. And he says explicitly, with respect to our rational powers, that sin does not, does not lessen, the original sin did not lessen or destroy them. So we can look at ourselves, and we can even look at human beings before they're baptized, or anything, where original sin still got them, um, you know, and, and learn about, about being made in the image and likeness of God. Now, Adam before the fall, St. Thomas says, would have thought more luminously, that's one of his words, it's a beautiful word, and more quickly than we do after the fall, than he did after the fall. And, and Adam, when he was created, didn't need to learn anything. St. Thomas argues that he, he was good to go with respect. He was full of knowledge and could teach immediately. And all of that, of course, was lost, not because natural powers were diminished through sin, but because of the loss of the gift of original justice, which affects the will. And original sin, Thomas says, is transmitted through the will, not through the intellect, which is, again, part of an interesting part of this story. And again, justification for looking at the nature of the human intellect to help us understand uh, what is a real glory for each human being and part of our dignity maybe the core of our dignity, being made in the image and likeness of God. The, so that's all by way of, of what we'll be doing and a justification of it, a philosophical examination of the human intellect drawn from uh, Aristotle and St. Thomas, what they share. Now in the next section of this talk, I do want to talk about contemplation and action in a coinus more generally, and then we'll move to an actual analysis of the human intellect. St. Thomas argues in the Summa, in the second part of the second part, 188.6, that a life combining contemplation with action is superior to a life of contemplation alone. By action here, he doesn't mean any activity based on, on rational forethought but activities such as teaching and preaching, he says explicitly. And these, he says, are based on what he calls, and I'm quoting him, the fullness of contemplation. The argument that he offers is this. This is why contemplation with action, where action means teaching and preaching, is better than contemplation alone. And this is perfectly to mistake. It's why you love St. Thomas when he gives you an argument like this, an image. He says, for just as it is better to illumine than merely to shine, so it is better to give to others the things contemplated than simply to contemplate. This passage, of course, is a source of one of the mottos of us, the Dominican Order, to contemplate and to share with others what is contemplated. Thomas's position about the superiority of the mix of contemplation and action over contemplation alone entails the following points. First, contemplation alone is not action or doing something by direct effort of will. In itself, it is an event or occurrence, Thomas says, of rest or repose. Now, this is not to be taken to be a form of sleep, the way many of my students sleep when I teach. <laughs> That's not contemplation, but it's rest or repose with respect to, it's not doing something. It's not the mind doing something. In that sense, it's rest and repose. It's, it's an occurrence of being and having 
rather than doing, making, or acting. Second point, contemplation and action are better than contemplation alone. If that's the case, then action must add something that contemplation lacks and that fulfills and completes contemplation. In this life, at least, the two together are better uh, than rest alone. Third, whatever action brings to the mix, however, Thomas holds that contemplation has primacy and priority with respect to action. And therefore, rest has primacy and priority over action. This is because the action in question is sharing what is contemplated. Thomas can hold that the mix of contemplation and action is better than contemplation alone because the mix of contemplation and action is saturated with contemplation. The, content, the contemplated is what is shared. There must be shining, in other words, shining that is beheld in order for there to be illuminating. Now, contemplation, teaching, and preaching, this mix of rest and action that I've been mentioning, are achievements of the human intellect. Thomas maintains the prior, primacy and priority of rest to action with respect to contemplation, teaching, and preaching because he holds deeper and more basic positions about the primacy and priority of rest with respect to action within human intellection itself. I want to talk about these deeper and more basic positions about the nature of the human intellect that give rest, its rest, primacy over action in the life of human thinking and knowing, all human thinking and knowing. Our interest in contemplation in this lecture then is quite focused and specific in order to illumine how we image God through our intellectual natures. It is to look at Thomas's basic account of thinking itself to see how rest has primacy with respect to motion for every human intellect. This is to lay bare the contemplative dimension inherent in the capacity for thinking and in the actual thinking of every single human being. You may not think of yourself as someone who contemplates a lot, but in the sense we'll explore, you're doing it all the time. The issue is, understanding that, are we going to do it more and in higher and better ways? Thus realizing more and more ourselves is made in the image and likeness of 